You're listening to the Asotucon Sessions by Effective live from Asotucon 2024. All right, this is Kyle Mountsier, and I am here on the Asotucon podcast stage. Last podcast of today. I don't know when this gets released, but last podcast of today in collaboration with Effective. And sitting across from me is Mike Stanton, President, CEO, NADA. Mike Stanton. Thanks so much for being with yeah, me here. Thanks for having us, Kyle. Yeah, this is great. And we we get to uh, have a good amount of conversations, and it's always filled with like, whoa, you hit me with a lot of information, so I'm excited about our conversation. Um, the, the last time we talked, actually, uh, I think, was we were at um, the, Washington, the Washington Dealers Association Auto Show, yeah. and that was it was the day that the stay was made on, uh, I think it's the stay, right? That's what we call it, on the yeah. cars rule. Can you give us an update? Like, have the, has there been continued development or is it really just like continuing to pursue the same conversation, um, you know, on Capitol Hill uh, with legislators? Yeah, that stay is a technical term really for just a pause. So yep. the FTC paused its own rule based on the actions that NADA uh, took with the Texas Automobile Dealers Association in challenging the FTCs. They're calling it the cars rule. It's better referred to as a vehicle shopping rule. And first, I wanted to, and we were talking ahead of time, dealers, so many dealers, the vast majority, 95 plus percent, are doing things the right way with customers, and they're getting better every day, evidenced by the, you know, the attendance you got here at, at your conference. They're going to learn and they're going to get better. They take care of their customers. So this rule is a massive overreach and it paints the whole industry with a, a broad brush. And the NADA and our dealer board just thinks it's completely unacceptable. Uh, you don't like to have to go out and challenge legally uh, the FTC, but we've done just that. Uh, but our advice is for dealers to prepare for this. It's not the safeguards rule. It is the vehicle shopping rule. And we are ready to put out a guide in about two weeks to help dealers uh, prepare. And there are vendors out there that are doing the same thing. So don't ignore this. Uh, we expect a final decision uh, around late, probably late summer, early fall. Uh, so I, I would say hope for the best, but hope's not a strategy. Prepare for the worst on this because there's probably gonna be some form of change in how, how we're gonna have to do business going forward. And we wanna make sure we're prepared for it because the, the thing is, with, with the rule attempts to address all of this is already illegal. Right, yep. And what they've done is they put the whole industry in the same bucket, they changed the process for how we sell vehicles. And the kicker is it's $50,000 per plus, it's 51 and change per infraction. So that could add up very, very quickly. Right. It could decimate uh, a, a dealership. So pay attention. Look for more guidance coming out from NADA in the next couple of weeks. Well, and and the the way I see it is because it's illegal already, and really what it does is enable uh, enable this massive fining. It's really a hunting license, right? Is what it is what it enables. It says like, all right, pull pull the trigger and go. Right is kind of the way that um, you know the people that with 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 the heavy hammer will come after it. And what, what it really shows me is that as an industry, right? Yes, NADA is obviously in the offices with these people lobbying for the correct read of the industry. But as an industry, we've probably done ourselves a disservice at being in our local politicians' offices, being in our communities, and, and really sharing what we actually do as an industry and how we're caring for customers, as, we're, as you're saying, 95% are operating completely legally. How do we, you know, in this next, like, let's call it four to five months, how do we can, like work to rewrite that story quickly where yeah. we're at? Well, you mentioned the words hunting license. I mean, the hunters of the FTC, and they're not qualified to hunt. They think they understand our business and they don't. They haven't taken the time to go out and do the work. They base this rule on 100,000 complaints and that sounds like a lot of complaints. But that's the numerator. We've got 42 million transactions out there between franchise dealers, and independent dealers with service operations. That's where the, the FTC yep. has oversight. You take 100,000 into 42 million and you're talking about less than one quarter of 1% and they wanna change the way we do business. And to your point, we need to let the legislators know exactly what we're doing. That's what NADA does. We've got, we're, we're challenging this rule uh, from a legal perspective, but we're also uh, supportive of an FTC, it's called the FTC Redo Act. 
uh, just go back to the drawing board and do it all over again. There's all kinds of procedural, they broke, broke their own rules pulling this together. <laughs> so there's that, and we're also supporting appropriations rider that, riders that would effectively defund the FTC from going ahead and and, uh, and hunting, uh, to use yeah. your words. Yeah, so there's a lot of work being done, that's but, awesome. But we gotta tell the story. And, we and have you, to tell the story. And so too, you all have done a great job helping to amplify that as yeah, well, yeah. so thank you. Yeah, we'll continue to do it. Um, I want to shift just a little bit because if I didn't ask about EVs with the president of NADA sitting on the stage, I'd be remiss, right? Um, the, it's, it's a conversation that has its ebbs and flows, right? Where uh, we see great boosts in, in, in overall EV purchase volumes, then retractions. We see consumers adopting and then pulling back from adoption. We see even OEMs leaning really far in, mid last, mid to late last year, and then pulling back this year. Um, where's the narrative right now, and, and why does it matter to both dealers and consumers? Well, the, the, you just said it. Consumers are the most important. We want to make, make our customers happy. We don't want to shove, shove things down their throats that they don't want. The government's trying to do that, and that doesn't make sense. You got to look back, though. You got to look back a, a couple years, about three, four years ago, the manufacturers, who they're the regulated entity. They build them, we sell them. Right. Uh, they agreed that 40% by 2030 uh, seemed reasonable, but that included hybrids, all hybrids. And then they... The White House said, if you want to get the goodies that were involved in the Inflation Reduction Act, we need you to commit to 50 percent. They went along with that. Uh, I would say begrudgingly went along with that. And then it was months later, the EPA comes out with a rule that says, throw the hybrids out of the picture. We want 67 fully battery electric by 2032, 67 percent. And that's when the wheels kind of came off for the manufacturers and they started to challenge the rule. From an NADA perspective, three years ago, dealers were, were being blamed by consumer groups and environmentalists for not wanting to sell EVs. You're not even stocking EVs. Well, Kyle, our manufacturers weren't even making EVs back right. then. Yeah. So You're NADA right. went on a campaign. We are all in. We're making the investments. We're not against electrification. We got $6 billion worth of inventory sitting on our lots right now. Right. We got another $6 billion invested in infrastructure to, to repair our sales and service facilities, you know, to, to, uh, to sell electric vehicles to customers. It's not against. It's, it's not just against, the right time. But we've been all in, and then, you're, hey, you're going too far too fast with the 67%, and now we're, we're in the highly skeptical range. We don't believe based on the... That was not the get us off the stage music. If you're listening on the pod, we apologize for the, for the interruption. Uh, Mike, you were saying like, we're not all, we're not against. We're, we're in. It's Absolutely. just the right timing, listening to the customers for when they're ready for it yeah. and making sure the political landscape, the OEMs and the customers can meet. We're, right? we're just, we're taught, we talk to thousands of consumers every day and we see things in real time, we're highly skeptical that we can get to these numbers. So what's NADA doing about it? Yep. You know, we're telling our story again on Capitol Hill. We're supporting congressional review acts that would challenge the rule. And we're supporting any type of rider that would defund the, uh, the EPA from putting this into effect because we just don't believe that we can get there. These are unrealistic objectives. Now we know that anything from a legislative perspective is, that gets to Biden's desk, and we do think we'll get bi bipartisan support on some of these things, yeah. are gonna get vetoed. But yeah. let's, let's put, put him on, on the record, and then let's see what happens between now and uh, you know, the, the next election. And it's about the things we all know about, right? Yep. It's affordability, it's charging, you know, it's it's a whole range anxiety, the infrastructure. I mean, you talk to a dealer, not one dealer I've talked to, and I've talked to a lot, has said that they think this is doable on this time frame. Yeah, and, and no, I just, don't think so. Well, and, no and, and they're seeing it on the front lines, whether or not yeah. consumers are actually adopting it. Yeah, the early adopters, they're, that, they're there. They're a different different, different buyer than, yep. than the mass market. It's just going to take more time. Yeah, absolutely. Before we end, I, I, I want to make sure that we talk a little bit about the show because uh, depending on when this actually gets released, there'll be a lot more energy around the show between booths, booth op op opportunities for vendors getting open, tickets and, and announcements happening. Uh, it may seem like a long time, but there's a big build up to the show. What are you excited about this year? Oh gosh, Las Vegas was so good. I mean, anybody that thought our industry would go virtual, just doesn't know our industry. Right. We are a people industry. We're here not just to hear from speakers, but to learn from each other and uh, to check out what the vendors are, are offering. I mean, they're iterating every day. We couldn't do what we do without without the vendor community. So, I mean, Vegas was a record on on a number of different 
uh, levels. We're very excited about New Orleans. I mean, your attendance is up considerably. We expect ours to continue to, to uh, go on that record, record yeah. track. So we're very, very excited about it. The exhibit floor is always sold out. We have a waiting list of 50 to 100 companies every year. We want to keep it tight so that it's good for, you know, for, uh, for the vendors that make the investment and for the dealers too. Yeah. So we're just, yeah, we're super excited about I it. I heard a couple of things about the, the opening welcome reception that uh, I think are gonna be a little bit nuts. So I'm excited about the show. So. Yeah, yeah, we're not ready to fully <laughs> disclose that. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Mike, thank you so much for joining us and uh, uh, congratulations on every, all the work that you're doing. Thank you so much for um, just caring for the industry so well. Yeah, thank you, Kyle. Thank you for listening to this Asotucon session by Effective. If you want more content like this, you can check out our other podcasts. We have a daily show called The Automotive Troublemaker, Monday through Friday, here on podcasts, also live streamed on YouTube and LinkedIn and Facebook. We also have a long form podcast called Auto Collabs. Auto Collabs. And if you just want to go a little deeper into this community, you should sign up for our regular email. We put our heart and soul into it. You can get it for free by going to asotu.com. We'll see you next time.